with us alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore, and we're glad to be bringing you action and welcoming you to the MGM Grand here on the Vegas Strip in beautiful Las Vegas. When you get a fight like this that everybody's been talking about, it's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. Unable to make an impact there by Ward. Ward's tagged by that powerful hook. If the low stamina fighter does not get rid of a high stamina fighter in the early going of a fight, what can he possibly do to try and secure himself a win? Well, one thing he's going to do is grab a lot on the inside and keep it slow. Really not allow the pace to get away from him. grabbing on to his opponent. Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. And now he brings the left hand upstairs. Good defensive skill with the block by Ward. Way through this round. Not able to land the headshot. Nice work blocking that and then an uppercut of his own. Teddy, what do you think we're going to see out of Jones? I think you're going to see what you always see. You know, you're going to see a guy that breaks the rule book as far as the way you're supposed to go about technically approaching pugilism. But I think you're going to see speed, you're going to see power, great reflexes, great sense of anticipation, and you're going to see a little cockiness. Jones is showing you what it takes to be the best in this business. Good, crisp combos. That was a fine block by Roy Jones. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Jones has got something to think about now. He just threw a punch and had one good, solid right focus. hand land. It's like a whole new fighter out there. Look at him as we start this round. Remember what happened to him in the last round. Now he's up on his toes. Yeah, well, remember what happened to him in the last round. That's what we say, but he doesn't say that. He's putting that out. He's putting it into the rearview mirror. He's going forward down the road with a lot of hope, a lot of vigor, a lot of confidence. Staying away from those headshots with his defense up top. He just missed that shot up top. Jones's inability to hit the target is really making him look silly right now. He's throwing plenty of punches, just none of them are landing. No, he's throwing them too wide, too far away, and what's going to be worse, right now he's only getting frustrated, maybe embarrassed as you touched on, but what's going to be worse is when he starts getting counted in between them. Takes one to give one, he comes back with a right hand. Halfway through round number two. You've used that description, stubborn, driven, 
single-minded focusedness for Roy Jones Jr. How much does that point to his success that he's had? Probably 75% of it because the physical abilities, a lot of people have comparable physical abilities, sometimes even better than guys that get to a higher place. But Keep mentally, moving. emotionally, character-wise, you have it or you don't have it. He has it. Roy lands the uppercut. You got these what? Oh, and they decide to trade there. Ward's almost looking foolish that time he missed so badly. Final 10 seconds. Focus. Look, good, look. And round number three is underway. Ward's in a good rhythm defensively here. Teddy, what is that, a credit to his ability to anticipate? You know, also, it's the teaching. Let's give the trainers credit. Of course, let's give his background of the amateurs credit, but he learned how to get away from punches. This is technique that was taught to him. Well, that was his intention, and that's what he's doing. Not engaging in the fight, but clinching. Not able to connect with the uppercut. And he ties up on the inside. Committing to the body work now. He lands the right hand. Keep moving. Keep moving. Jones is putting forth a great combination there. You got this one. You're still not moving in the boo boo. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Ward's showcasing one of the best weapons you can have, especially early on in a fight, to set the tone, and that is the jab. Yeah, and he's shown that it does more than just set up other punches and, you know, just, you know, snap your head back. It just drops everything. You know, it just throws the other guy's rhythm off, and that's what he's doing a good job of. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. That was nice. He just drew the punch from his opponent and then a good counter by Ward. Yeah, like running through the rain without getting wet. Beautiful. Keep moving. Keep moving. Among some of the athletes. And bang, and away he goes. Roy Jones Jr. goes down, but is he out? You never know with Roy. Jones Jr. hitting the deck but rising up. Well, when you drop your hands, you pull back, you do all those things, sooner or later there's a chance you're going to hit the deck. Now it's up to Jones to find a way to survive. Now his opponent got away from that uppercut. Ten clicks of the talk. Keep moving. And we come to the end of the round. Ward's enjoying a big lead here, up three to zip on Teddy's scorecard, but even more important than that, he's already gotten to his man. Yeah, he's hurt him in the body, 
And once you hurt him in the body, he flows upstairs, was able to go there. Use this jab. Jones is trying to get back to where he was here in this round. He was knocked down in the get last out, round. Now, Teddy, out, when you're the move. opponent and you knock the guy down, those opening few moments of the next round, do you try to size up and kind of take into account where your opponent is? Do you look into his eyes and assess the situation? Well, I don't know if you get close enough to look right into his eyes as his opponent, but first of all, in the corner, you better not send your fighter out if his eyes don't look clear. That's your responsibility, looking out for the fighter. But as the opponent out there, you look at his legs. If his legs look a little wobbly, you get right on him. Did you see that? He was able to get up and continue on last time. Now he goes down again. One, two, three, four, five. Roy Jones Keep Jr. Moving. is able to get up. Keep Teddy, moving. I question, though, Relax. if he'll be able to go on. What does he have to do? Well, he's got to know what to do, but what not to do. Don't use your legs. Don't try to move, because that's the inclination. Get on your bicycle when you've been hurt. No. The bicycle's not there, you got flat tires. What you gotta do is grab on the inside, clear your head. He clinches when he gets to the inside. Well played, straight right hand. Jones's work rate is very high. I looked at the punch stats, and you can see that he's a busy guy. I don't think he's an effective guy, though. A lot of these aren't landing. Well, you have a reason to think that, Joe. Guess what? I agree. They're not landing. Not precise at all by Roy Jones. Keep moving. <laughs> He missed with that headshot. He gets to him with an uppercut. Oh, man, he's in rough shape after absorbing that blow. Now the question changes. It's no longer a point of how to win. Wow! Can he beat the count? I don't think so here, Teddy. Now I know where they got that saying. Falling like a sack of potatoes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Can you believe that? If there were 30 more seconds in that round, I don't know that he survives, but now he gets the benefit of the 60-second break. Yeah, he gets the benefit, and he's got to show his experience now to kind of have a short memory. I know that sounds crazy, but forget about what happened and find a way to have confidence. Find something to hold on to going out for the next round. That was a miss by Roy Jones. He's tired. He's tired. Jones is doing well here with that two-punch combination. Teddy, there are opportunities that are here for him, aren't there? Yeah, counterpunch opportunities because he's got an opponent who's walking in a little bit. Now he has a chance to start to chuck something back at him a little. Keep working the body. You're not focusing. Just much too much for his opponent. Another knockout for him.
Now that's how you end a fight right there. Yes, he was controlling throughout, but he made a good, clean finish with the knockout. Yeah, as a trainer, you want to know, can a guy punch? Can a guy defend? You know, can a guy control distance? But you want to know, can a guy finish? He got the answer. Yes, he can finish. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Have yourself a great night.